Good morning. morning. Y'all look great. Good to see everybody this morning. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. What a wonderful place to spend your morning. Let's start off by singing page number 307, Send the Light, as our call to worship. We're going to sing the first and the fourth verse. Oh, come on, got to do better. Good <laughs> All together now. Good morning. First one's going to wonder count. <laughs> Jealousy's a bad thing, isn't it? <laughs> One of the seven <laughs> I know, don't want myself. Anyway, welcome to St. Mary's. Glad to see each and every one of you here today. Uh, we thank our, we welcome our visitors to be with us and uh, hope you get something out of this special time and this special church. Um, let's jump right on into it. Let's go ahead and get into our announcements. And tomorrow is going to be a special day in some young lady's life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Miss Zelfie has got a birthday coming up. Can we sing happy birthday for her? All stand, please. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. All right, amen. Notice I'm smart. I didn't ask you how young either, so. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it is good being a house of the Lord. Uh, one other announcement. Uh, next Sunday will be a new month and all. You know what that means. It is prayer partner, so we encourage each and every one to come out here to, to pray for the church, to pray for our country, just to come together. And we just, uh, I know you'll be blessed by doing that. No other announcements. Uh, let's go into our prayer request. Um, for those that did not know, uh, Miss Jenny uh, passed away last night. And uh, so please remember uh, her family, Mr. Chris, all of them. Please remember them in your prayers during this time. So um, any other announcements I could have missed? I'll say this, you know, and this is changing up a little bit and all. You know, it's, uh, we're, we're people of routine, are we not? I have a set thing I like to do, and uh, the choir was singing so beautifully this morning. I was back there with them, and they were having such a good time, they wouldn't even stop and let me pray with them. <laughs> you wouldn't even wait, wouldn't even wait to pray with them. <laughs> <laughs> but in saying that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pray for them, 
but also going to, we're going to pray for the church overall. So let us. Oh, let me ask one more thing. Is there any unspoken? If so, please raise your hand. Absolutely. We all have somebody we can pray for. So let us go to our Lord and Savior in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for a church, Lord, that, that loves you, that serves you. And we thank you, Lord, for leading God and directing our hearts and all that you would have us to do. And Father, even during these times of should be of rejoicing, knowing when a sister has gone to heaven is with you, it leaves a little void in our hearts, Father. It leaves a little sadness. And Father, we just we pray for the families. We pray for them that, that, that have, have lost someone, someone is close to them. We pray for comfort to be upon them, upon this church. And Father, we also, we want to remember all those that have come to serve you. We thank you for the choir and the musicians, Lord, that lift their voices up in praise. And I ask, Lord, that there, may their voice be used to magnify your glory. May it be an encouragement to the congregation to, to lift their voices up as we worship you today. And Father, now we just ask that you would be with us as we continue in our service. May we praise your name in song. And indeed, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, our hymn of praise this morning is Revive Us Again. It's page 295 in your hymn book, and we're going to sing all four verses. If you would please stand. I've been invited to sing with a choir just about good as it gets. <laughs> I got, I got, uh, I was looking at the bulletin this morning. And I was quickly reminded today is my scripture reading day. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> but we come prepared. <clears throat> Be ready in season and out of season. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, this come is, uh, our scripture today is out of Psalms 147, 5. Great is our Lord, and mighty in power, His understanding is infinite. You see, our F Heavenly Father's understanding has no limits. 
It has no boundaries. That means his knowledge of our situation is limited, unlimited, basically, to all of us. His attention is on you. God knows where you're at at this very moment. He knows everything about you. He knows every moment of your future. He knows how you will respond in every circumstance. How can, we get, how can God that gives that kind of attention to more than 7 billion people at one time, how can he do it? Because of who he is, infinite in his being. If you were looking look in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 27, it says, Behold, heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. See, this was Solomon talking about God himself. This was the temple, the dedication of the temple when it was built in honor of God. What he was implying was, no matter how great this sanctuary is, no matter how great this temple is, it can't contain you. You see, God is everywhere. God is in every aspect of your life. For those that choose not to let him be that way, he's still there. He sees all things. But you see, he loves you. He is always there to try to lead, guide, and direct you. For the Christian, for the believer, that is so important to our life. Amen. Because so, how in the world can we travel these roads each and every day without our Lord and Savior being there with us? For the unbeliever, it's, a, it's sad. But that's what we're called to do, to be that light, to glorify God, to give hope in a dying world. He knows everything. Let us glorify Him in our deeds and actions as He looks upon us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for the, the message, Lord, of reminding us that You are in control of all. We ask now, Lord, that You would lead God, direct our hearts, may they be focused upon You. Thank you, Father, for loving us in such a great way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would the ushers come forward, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time you've given us, Lord. We thank you for all the uh, treasures of the world that you have put at our disposal. And Father, now that we take, we ask that you would accept this offering, our tithes, Lord, to be used to, for furthering your kingdom. For these things we ask in Jesus' name, amen.
Please stand for the doxology, please. Okay, if you will, turn in your hymnals to number 505, Love Lifted Me, and we're going to sing all three verses. Yes. 
I forgot to announce that it was whispered in my ear uh, right before uh, the service started, and it brought back a memory, and it's an invitation to each and every one of you. Uh, the invitation is, would you like to spend a day with me? Now, I know that's a hard thing to turn down. <laughs> The Eastern Conference is around the corner. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, we have two Wednesday. If you'd like to be a delegate, you know, please uh, uh, see Miss Corinne. She's going. She's got a list there. She's real uh, ready to pencil your name in. And and uh, if the response is low, let me know, and we'll just start adding names. How about that? <laughs> so anyway. And then also in the way of the birthdays, I didn't have a February calendar, but Miss Nina's birthday is on the 2nd, February the 2nd. So we wish you a happy birthday this coming week. So absolutely. Guess who told me? <laughs> a loving husband. All right. All right. Enemies. We've all had them, have we not? Sometimes we, and enemies can bring the, either the best out of you or the worst out of you. And I can be very honest. I've been on both sides of the, that fence. And you know what? When the enemy wins, they drag you down to their level. It hurts. It hurts you more than it hurts them. I promise you that. When you let go for that one moment and you lower yourself, it, it'll bother you to no end if you got a conscience. Now, Christians have conscience. We're, we're human. We're weak. But God talks about that in, a, in quite a bit. He talks about when our enemies fail. And sometimes we probably want to, yeah, they deserve what they get. But that's not what a Christian is supposed to believe. And I had to really read it two or three times myself and and draw an understanding. So if you will, take your Bibles. It's going to be a very short one. Uh, Proverbs chapter 24. And we're going to be reading verses 17 and 18. Proverbs 24, 17 and 18. Do not rejoice when your enemy fails. And do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Least the Lord see it and it displeases him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the, the reminders of how we are supposed to be, Father. Children of yours, we would go out and we represent you. And Father, as we pray that our focus would be upon you and not upon ourselves. We ask, Lord, that you would Lead God and direct us in all that we would do. May we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This makes me feel like at home. This takes place at British Chapel all the time. <laughs> but it's a good time. Anyway... Let the wicked forsake his way. And you're thinking, well, where did you get that title from? And I think it will come very clear to you at the end of this sermon. But God tells us, do not rejoice, do not gloat. Don't be happy when your enemy is having a hard time. And again, I have struggled with that in my past and all. And you think, well, great, I can't believe you have any enemies. I can't either. I can't believe that I have any. Everybody likes me. I'm fooling myself. I know that. Because there's no way that you can go through life without having a disagreement. It doesn't make them my enemy, but it does bring a little strife in, in our relationship. And then when the enemy to me is someone that sat there is constantly picking and trying to find ways to undermine everything you do. To me, that is the enemy. Because what I try to do and what you try to do as a Christian is project yourself as a Christian, to project yourself as the light of Christ. And when you're doing that and you see these people that go against you, you're like, 
How can it be? We find out that the Lord allows things to happen in our lives. We look at Paul, and Paul would reach out, cry out to the Lord. He would say, remove this thorn from my side. And we say, well, what is that thorn? You know, that's something they talk about. And they still do not know what that thorn is. But I think the message is in the Scripture itself. And what it tells us is that Paul was saying that the demon of Satan was aggravating him, was bothering him. You know what? I can picture that. Because sometimes you feel like that the enemy is Satan. Amen? And what happens is, is those, the, some of the thoughts that come from them, some of their actions that come from them, you're thinking they are not Christ-like. They're letting the devil lead them. Let me be careful about when we say that and when we think that, okay? Because even though we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't always get, agree, amen? We have different opinions. We have different thoughts. But Christ, our Father, He's got a plan for you. You know, I asked a question one time, and my question was this. Because we have all these different personalities, and when we get to heaven, how in the world can we all come together? And I think it should be very much like it is here on earth today. When your focus is upon God, upon Christ Himself, the other stuff kind of takes care of itself. We get back to the Scripture. The Scripture tells us do not gloat, do not rejoice when an enemy is having problems. He wants us to pray for them. He says in Luke 6, He said, Blessed are the, bless those that curse you, pray for those that hurt you. In other words, you're supposed to pray for them. And I'm going to tell you, I've I got a testimony I'm going to share with you down the road. I probably ain't going to give it to you today because it is a good one. And you'll say, why are you teasing me like that to make you come back? But what I want to say is the power of prayer. I was at my wit's end the other day. You know, I'm still doing my schooling. I'm still doing things. And they asked a simple question. They wanted me to explain in detail the virgin birth. Wow, that was a tough one for me. I had to pray on it. I put my hands together, I bow my head, and I said, Lord, you know I'm not good at this kind of stuff. And you know what? He gave me the words. All I had to do was dictate. I didn't even hardly have a mistake, and I did a whole page. And it was good enough, my wife said, you wrote that? <laughs> God will answer questions. He will answer the most basic little thing. He will help you through your enemies. But what He wants you to do, but see, I want you to understand this. You used to be an enemy of God Himself. You say, well, no, I've always loved the Lord. No, you, when you came in this world, you were His enemy. You see, He wants you to join him and that's what you did you accepted his call of salvation you said i will do this i you love me i know you love me i love you in return but your enemy does not know christ because if he did he wouldn't act like that amen and so what he calls us to do he says pray for them if they abuse you paul faced it all the time he prayed for them in Mark 11:25, he said, Whenever you stand praying, if anyone has anything against you, forgive them. Forgive them. This ain't the one where Matthew, when you're at the altar, bring in your gift. And he said, leave your gift and go back and make amends with your brother. This is not that one. When I'm sitting here praying... And if I think anybody's got something against me, I'm to forgive them. Because God forgave me. He forgave each and every one of you. And if God's willing to do that for you, should you not be willing to do that for them? Proverbs 16, we find when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even the enemies be at peace with him. You see, there's power in prayer. There's power in forgiveness. 
But there's also power when you're pleasing to the Lord. When you do the things that the Lord calls you to do, when you go and when He puts something on your heart and He says, I want you to pray for that person, you're like, Lord, I don't really. We have to think of Ananias. We have to think of Saul after the road to Damascus when he's there. And he's, and he's seen the Lord, but he's, got, he's blinded. He's got scales on his eyes because Saul was there to kill, to take the Christians home. He was going to put them in prison. He's going to kill them. And God spoke to Ananias. He said, I want you to go to brother Saul. I want you to go to him and baptize him. Saul was the enemy. He would have put, if he had came in here today, he would have put you in prison before he came Paul. That's what he and Ananias had to do. He had to trust in the Lord. So what am I saying is we have to trust in the Lord. When the Lord lays something upon your heart, you've got to do it. And I'm going to tell you, there's no greater joy when you do that. It is no greater joy. You'll sit there and when you look back and you're like, you might be the one that planted the seed that led that person to Christ. You might be the one through your actions, through the light shining through you, that maybe saved them. Save their lives. He also goes on to tell us, don't repay evil for evil. Evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult, insult you. Are you one of those when somebody says something smart to you, you want to say something smart back? You've got to bite that tongue. Sometimes you've got to stick your finger in your mouth and bite it. Don't do it, the Lord says. He says, do this. I want you to do the southern thing. Yes, the southern thing. Bless your heart. Amen. Amen. And you know, bless your heart has so many different meanings, does it not? We have a good time with that one. But that's what uh, God called you to do. He will grant you a blessing. For the Scriptures say, if you want to enjoy life and have many happy days, you don't want to be walking around downtrodden, sad all the time, worried about stuff. Bless somebody else. Bless somebody. Say a prayer for them, especially for those that you don't get along with that good. Pray for them. Say, Lord, will you please touch their heart today? Bless their heart in the southern way. Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. In other words, don't lower yourself. You know, you all know me good enough. I use myself for example a lot. And I do it in a way so I don't put my foot in my mouth with you. There's sometimes in business I don't want to do certain things. Probably like all of you at work or something like that. I am so tempted. You ever had the devil on one side and the angel on the other? And one whisper in the ear, oh, just tell him a little white lie. It won't matter. <sighs> it's tempting. It's very tempting. But what I have found out, what I have found out is if I am honest and tell the truth, it goes far greater. It's almost they, they solved the problem for me. They made it easy for me. If I told a lie, it had been rolling one to another, another lie, and another lie. A little white lie can grow legs and get big on you. Tell the truth. Do it in love and compassion, but tell the truth. Romans continues to tell us, never pay evil back with evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see that you're honorable. Even when people are seeing that you're being done a great wrong, if you do the honorable thing and talk highly in a nice, compassionate way, the wrath turns back on the, on the enemy. I promise you that. You would want be the one. You will be the one that comes out smelling like a rose. You would the one that'll glorify God in what you do. You can live in peace with everyone, but there he say it continues on. Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of our God. God will fight your battles for you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll uphold you. He will handle your fight for you. We need to be more like Job. Remember Job in the Old Testament? You remember what Job went through? And God allowed it to happen. Job lost everything. He lost his family. 
He lost his possessions. He lost everything. He was a rich man. But when you lose your family, your children, God did leave him with his wife. That was a blessing. Job never got angry. He never looked at his neighbors that didn't have it bad. He says myself in Job 31, I have, I have, I have I ever rejoiced when disaster struck my enemies or come excited when harm came their way? No, and he called it for what it was. I have never sinned by cursing anyone or asking for revenge. You see, Job had friends, and, and they were friends, but a, a good intentional friend, inten- friend will sometimes tell you you just want them to be quiet, right? And they sitting there and saying, well, you got problems, and your problems comes from hidden sin. Job could have got frustrated, and he did to a degree, but he never cursed them. He never got angry at what was going on. He wanted answers. And I think it's okay we can ask God for answers. But he didn't get angry with his enemy. And then we have to think about Stephen. Stephen, the martyr, he sat there and just told it the way it was. He told told the Jewish people what they didn't want to hear that they were the ones that had killed Jesus Himself, the Messiah, the one that had come down. And in their righteous anger, or in righteous, they wanted to kill Him. They were foaming. They were gashing. They wanted to destroy this man. Because you know, sometimes the truth hurts. And what did Stephen do? As they drug Him out and had Him out there in, in the courtyard, and we know the story, They picked up those rocks. Can you imagine being in his shoes, somebody taking you because you just told the truth and they're so mad and they're going to stone you. Can you imagine how he really felt? Fortunately, Scripture tells us how he felt. As they stoned him, and this is in Acts 7, if you like to look at it sometime, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit, He fell to his knees because he he had just witnessed Christ Himself standing there by God the Father waiting to accept Him. And that was one of the things that made them very mad because they couldn't see Christ. And He said this, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And He died. He woke up in paradise. He woke up there with God Himself. But in His love and His compassion for Christ, to be Christ-like, even though it was a difficult thing to do, He let Christ shine through and said, do not charge them with this sin. So what are we to do? What is our actions? Isaiah 55 will tell you in 6 and 7, Seek the Lord why He can be found. See, there's going to be a time when the Lord, the Lord is not going to be able to be found. You are not going to be able to be found. Will it not be, and I talk about this, I met, I, every church does at one time or another. How great would it be right now, suddenly the pews, boom, were empty, right? We'd be getting new glorified bodies. It'd be a celebration. You know, I thought about this the other day. I want to talk about that in just a sec. Just a second. Can you imagine when we think about the graves burst forth? And we think about those that have been put to rest, those that are asleep, and then those that are still alive and going up to heaven, but you're still going to get a new body. And then you go to heaven because the Lord hasn't come yet. He's come to get you because you mean that much to Him. I want you to imagine what it was like. You're sitting there, or sometimes like even you don't feel like going, you're hurt and you're aching, and next thing you're snatched up. I can almost see it. As your, as your arms go out, a transformation takes place. You are a new 
creature in Christ. The things that you, that you used to worry about, the enemies, no longer matter. You're pure. Yes. You're not carrying your sin to heaven. You're going to be a new creature in Christ with a new body. You are going to be new. We don't worry about our enemies because they're your enemies no more. Because God said, they are my enemies. I will take care of the revenge on them. You just set the good example. He said, continues on, let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thoughts of things of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that He may have mercy on them. So what does this mean? We go back to the first. Pray for those that hurt you. Pray for them. You know, and I talk about this right often. It's an honor to pray on somebody's behalf. You're making intercession for them. There is so much power in prayer. Like I say, they can take a little simple country boy and make him sound like a scholar when he finishes typing. And I had to read it probably about five or six times saying, Lord, you are so good because there ain't no way I could come up with this. I'll share it with you one day. But right now, I want to emphasize the power of prayer, what it can do. It can change lives. It can turn families around. It can cause forgiveness in your heart to not sin against God. Because when you're thinking rash thoughts against that person or rejoicing at what they're doing, God said, I might turn my anger away from them. And what was left unsaid was, and put it on you. We don't want that. We want to be obedient to the Lord in all things, even though when it's not always easy. It's called faith. And when you step out in faith, I promise you, and if this doesn't come true, you can come talk to me about it. But when you step out in faith, great things are going to happen. I promise you that. And one last thing. God will forgive generously. He will forgive you of your sins. He will forgive them of theirs. You just have to be willing. You have to be willing to forgive because He forgave you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for this time of remembrance. We thank You, Father, that what it means to turn the other cheek. Though it's not easy, we have to look, do like Stephen and look toward you for our strength, our encouragement. And Father, we just, we're going to trust in you. I ask, Lord, that you would be with each and every one that is in here. If they have something against an enemy or a friend, something that is not pleasing to thee, I pray, Lord, that they would seek you and ask for you to reveal in our hearts of something that might be keeping us away from you, of true fellowship. I ask, Lord, for that upon this congregation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll say this. I, for those that are watching us online, if you stumbled across this or you sitting there watching, there's two things I want to say. First off, if you can and willing, you need to get back in church. Because there's a lot of strength when we come together as believers in fellowship and all. There's power in the blood. Yes, you can sit there and have church at home. I totally get that. But what it is never the same when you're not with your family. Your family is brothers and, brothers and sisters in Christ. And you would be welcome to come here and join us. And for those that maybe are just sitting around and just stumbled across this and want to mock what's, what God is doing, I'm going to tell you, God loves you too. And He's willing to forgive you.
But you have to have that fellowship that I just spoke of with, this, with a wonderful church or another church. You've got to be willing to take that step forward in faith. You've got to be willing to call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. You've got to be willing. You've got to have some skin in the game as well. But I promise you, if you do that, you'll be in everlasting glory. Well, that's where we're going to be one day. The altar is open to those that are here. If you'd like to come forward and, and thank God for what He's done or you have a burden, I'm, uh, I'm here ready to pray with you or you can pray by yourself. But the altar is always open for you. And I just want to make that clear. It's also a time of rejoicing when we, when we come together. I thank you for your attendance today. You seem to be a little quiet. I know what it is, Miss Alma, that, that air conditioner has quit squealing on us. <laughs> I think it's been cut off. It's warm up here. So, again, it's good to see each and every one of you. Forgive, forgive your enemies. Pray for them. And you will do more than you can imagine by praying for somebody that has something against you. Thank you. In closing, if you would, please take your hymn books, turn to 527, Glory to His Name. If you would, please stand. good seeing everyone here today. I just wish for y'all to have a very blessed week. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come to your house. It's always a privilege and an honor, Lord, to be able to come here and spend time with you. And Lord, as you forgive us, please give us the hearts to forgive others. And Lord, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit living within us that will guide and direct us, Lord, as we seek you out 
and just listen to your word and what you have to tell us and how you need to lead us. And Lord, just let your light shine through us so that we might be a beacon to others. And let everything we say and do be to glorify and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.